Welcome to a video on first order high pass filters. The contents we're going to look at the design equations for a high pass filter, how the boat plot works, then we're going to do some designs and simulations, and the simulations can include time domain, boat plots, and FFTs. So, the high pass filter has a resistor and a capacitor in series with the input. So, higher frequencies has a tendency to actually pass over capacitors. So, the higher the frequency is, the more will be let into the amplifier. And if it's a low frequency, the capacitor will become an open circuit and block anything from entering the amplifier. So, this resistor and capacitor, let's call it impedance Z, and that's R1 plus 1 over Cs, and the S of Laplace can just be replaced with J2 pi F. And if we have a look at this term right here, if we take the frequency to zero, or close to zero, this term will become extremely large, much larger than R1, say. And since we are dealing with an inverting amplifier configuration here, the gain of this is minus R2 over Z. So technically, we are dividing by extremely large value. Okay, so the gain will tend to go to zero. In the case where we make the frequency infinite, this term will go to zero and R1 will remain. So the gain will be R2 over R1 in this case. So this is the passband gain. And since this is a virtual ground over here, this capacitor and resistor is the only two components that interact with one another. R2 has no part in this, so we can just use the time constant. So it's 1 over 2 pi R1 C to calculate the cutoff frequency on the input here. Okay. So looking at the boat plot, at lower frequencies we ha will have this attenuation and this straight line right here is climbing with 20 decibels per decade. So if we're moving in that way, it is going down 20 dBs per decade, but positive gradient here. So that's why it's written as 20 and not minus 20 per decade. Again, this is a boat plot for another filter. And the minus 3 dB point for this design is at 482.3 Hz. And if you look at the passband gain, it is 20 dBs. Right. So, the first problem that I want you to attempt is to design a filter with a cutoff frequency at 1 kHz and it's required to remove lower frequencies. Okay, so high pass filter. The filter must have a passband gain of 20 dBs. Use a 1 kilo ohm resistor for the amplifier input impedance. Okay, so provide all components and then insert a 1 volt signal and find the outputs for the following conditions. When we have a 10 kilohertz input, when we have a 1 kilohertz input, when we have a 30 hertz input, and the extra information here is that at 300 hertz we have a gain of 10 decibels. So let's see if you can figure out the output voltages for these three outputs. And then, if you can do a simulation, pause the video, and in a couple of moments, we will go through the results. 
So, the input impedance should be 1 kilo ohm, so we make this resistor 1 kilo ohm, and we can calculate the capacitor with this, and it's 160 nanofarads. Since the passband gain should be 10 volts per volt, R2 can just be 10 kilo ohms. And that is the design. Let's have a look at the output voltages. Okay, so for the 10 kilohertz input, we should be in the passband. Okay, so 1 volt multiplied by 10 volts per volt, 10 volts peak. So the first one is easy. The second one is 1 kilohertz, that is our cutoff frequency, so at minus 3 dBs. So 17 dBs, 0 0.707. And our output should be 7.08 volts peak. Now, the last one at 50 hertz, the gain should be determined. And the info is that at 300 hertz, we have a gain of 10 decibels. Okay, so moving from 300 to 50, we should subtract 20 dBs. So we go from a 10 dB to minus 10 dB. So 10 dB is 3.162 and minus 10 is 0 0.3162 volts per volt. So the output should be in the range of 316 millivolts peak with a 1 volt input. So let's jump to the simulation and see if we get the same results. So, here is our setup, and I went beforehand and checked the boat plot for the different frequencies and noted down their cane at these different points, and you'll see that this is roughly a 20 decibel uh, jump that we have here. Again, I did the setup to run for the different frequencies that I mentioned in the problem and I want the simulator to determine the maximum outputs at these and show it in a log for us. So let's first do the AC analysis and check the boat plot. Close this thing. So our boat plot here Let's remove the phase and add this. Okay, so at 10 kilohertz, we are roughly in the 20 dB range. If we go to 1 kilohertz over here, that is minus 3 dB, so 17 decibels on the dot. And if we go to 300, our gain is 9.15 dBs, and if we go to 50, over here it's minus 10.5, 10 10.3 dBs. So, very close in the range of our calculations. So, let's see how this thing goes with when we actually input this signal right here and determine our maximum voltages. So let's run this transient, yes, and at 50 hertz we got 0.3 volts and our calculation was 0.315. This is also very close to 3 volts. 0.707 multiplied by the gain, so we get our 7 volts here and a little bit more than our designed 10 volts per volt of the gain here. But these values are very close to our calculated values. 
So if we have a look here at our our output plot, we can see that the issue comes in here at the beginning where the capacitor is still charging a bit. So we have a bit of a higher voltage here. We can we can fix this easily if we just say okay we want to start saving data from 10 milliseconds. Run this again our data will be much cleaner here. Anyways, here the green signal right here is our 30 hertz, then the blue one is our 300 hertz, our 1 kilohertz and our 10 kilohertz. So you can see the, as the frequency goes up, our amplifier starts to actually let through the frequencies which is higher. Okay, so that is it for problem one. Let's go and have a look at the second problem. Okay, the second problem, I give you a signal with three different frequencies in it. And I tell you to design a filter with a 20 dB pass band so we can use a 10k, 1k configuration that we did in the previous problem. And for the first one, I want to remove a 100 hertz component. So design a filter with a 480 hertz cut off frequency. So this is a distance away from the 100 hertz. So more of 100 hertz will be removed. And the second one here is to remove 100 hertz and the 1 kilohertz component. So only the 10k component should remain. And design the filter at 4.8 kilohertz. So pause the video, quickly design the filters and do a simulation to find the boat plots and have a look at the FFTs. We'll be back in a moment and we can look at the results. So for a 480 hertz filter we have a standard value of 350 nanofarads and for 4.8 kilohertz 53 nanofarads and note that this is a scaling of one decade and the capacitors also scale with one decade. Okay, so let's have a look at the simulations. So I went ahead and constructed both filters and set them up to do a boat plot first and I already included the data file with our signal. So let's go ahead and run the simulation and see if we have our 400 an 80 cutoff rate for the first filter here. So let's go to the minus 3 dB point. And that is very close to 480 hertz. So our first filter is functioning properly. The second filter should be at 4.8 kilohertz and we're at 4.88 kilohertz right here. So uh, both of our filters is functioning properly. Okay, so let's have a look at the input and output signals in the time domain and then look at the FFTs. Let's run this. OK, 
Okay, and so there's our original signal. You can see the 100 hertz on the outside, the 1 kilohertz and the 10 kilohertz sitting on it. So this first filter was to get rid of the 100 hertz only. So if we open this, we'll see that this signal is not moving up and down by a lot anymore. So most of the 100 hertz has been removed. And in the second one here, the 100 hertz and the 1 kilohertz should be removed. So most of this over here is the 10 kilohertz signal. And yes, we do still have some of the 1 kilohertz components remaining in here, but it's mostly gone. Okay, if you want more removed, you're going to have to design a higher order filter. This is only first order filters. So let's have a look at the FFT of this filter. So there's our original signal and the final one. Let's do a FFT for both of these. Select them. So as you can see, the green is the original and the 100 hertz has been suppressed by a lot. The 1 kilohertz is also being suppressed and the 10 kilohertz is actually being amplified. If we just have a look at the, the input, the 1 kilohertz is much larger than the 10 kilohertz in the original problem. Okay, so let's close down these windows and let's have a look at our first filter, original, final and FFT. You can see that the 100 hertz is being suppressed and the 1K and 10K is actually being amplified in this problem. So this filter is also doing its job properly and you can see it in the A50. This 100 hertz signal was quite large in the beginning and now it's almost flat there. Okay, and that is it for high-pass filters. Thank you for watching.